My heart is to see God's people full of passion and the fire of God, hungry for His presence on a daily basis, full of His power and having a positive impact on the world and those around them, living a life of freedom and victory. This is Running With Fire. It's great that you could join me today. There's a massive interest that people have in the future. I would just love to know what it may look like for their lives and for their families. So people read horoscopes, tea leaves, run to a fortune teller or even a prophet just to get some idea what may be ahead. Well, the truth is this, you and I actually can do quite a lot to, to, to an extent to determine what our future may be like. And so today I wanna to continue sharing with you on this powerful principle of sowing and reaping. You're gonna to see today six specific aspects of this truth that will help you sow your way to a better future. One of those truths is you reap more than you sow. Now that's a really good deal if you sow good seeds. Stay tuned. Have you ever heard of something called jogging in a jug? Mm, okay, well, nor did I. It's a concoction of four parts grape juice, four parts apple juice, one part apple cider vinegar. It's a folk remedy for high cholesterol and to, it will, it will uh, to clean your arteries. Now, I don't know if it works. It's never been scientifically proven, but wouldn't it be great if it did work? No? Yeah, yeah it would be great, wouldn't it? It would be great if it worked and, uh, and because you could gain all the benefits of jogging without having to exercise. You could reduce your cholesterol, improve your health, health without having to move. You could just drink it. No going to the gym, no exercising, no marathons, no cross trainer, no running. You can sit on your lazy boy and drink away to health. Man, I reckon that would be so, so good. You can get to the point where you say, honey, just uh, a glass of vinegar and pass me the cream donuts. <laughs> Chicken curry with loads of fat on the surface, as long as I have the vinegar as well. No problem. So what's that all about? So you and I, me included, we're constantly trying to break the connection between our actions and the consequences. We want to be naughty, not naughty, naughty, but naughty, and have no consequences. We want to be lazy and fit. We want to be slim and eat lots of hamburgers and chips. We want to break that connection between what I do and the consequences I face for it, not just in eating and drinking, but every area of life. Why is winning a lottery so popular? Have you thought about that? It's an opportunity to become wealthy without labor, to reap without sowing. There's other ways to make a lot of money, but they're not as appealing. They involve work. We want to avoid that. People love game shows where you can win hundreds, thousands, even a million dollars by just answering a few trivia questions, and you're rich. No years of study, no late days at the office. No sacrificing, no saving, bingo, a few questions. Why does all this appeal? It breaks the link between work and reward, between sowing and reaping. Well, you may be able to acquire wealth if you're lucky without labor or reverse the results of eating, but in most areas of life, sowing and reaping cannot be reversed or violated. It always applies. This law cannot be overturned by drinking vinegar. Sorry. Now, my goal today is to motivate you, encourage you, urge you, inspire you, I hope, to begin to sow good seeds so that you can be sure of a better future. See, friends, we have the ability given to us by God to determine to a measure, not entirely, to a measure our future. It all comes back to how we live today and the seeds that we sow. So we're going to look at six principles of sowing and reaping, all taken from Ecclesiastes in chapter 
11, you could call this a bit of an exegesis, if you like, today. So just keep your Bible open at Ecclesiastes 11, and you won't go far wrong. Here we go, verse 1, 2, 4, and 6. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you'll find it after many days. Everyone say many days. days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow. He who regards the clouds will not reap. Verse 6. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Principle number one, don't wait for favorable conditions. Ecclesiastes 11, 4, whoever watches the wind will not plant, whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. Procrastination is one of the devil's biggest weapons to stop us enjoying the many blessings that God has for us in this life. Do it now is the principle that's led many to success. Tell the person next to you, do it now. Yeah, do it now. And that principle is no less important in the area of sowing and reaping. I want you, by the end of the service, I want you to say, okay, I'm going to start sowing now. I'm not going to wait a month or two months or a year. I'm going to start sowing now. Let me tell you a couple of, a number of areas that we tend to procrastinate a lot in. We just don't get around to doing it. One of them is spending time with your husband, your wife, or your kids. We think, oh, well, look, I'm just really busy now, but hey, in a few years' time, you know, when my, this has happened and my job's not so demanding, hey, I'm going to spend... Hey, friends, if you're not careful, it might be too late. Before you know it, your kids are 21, married and gone, stolen by some man. <laughs> Takes your own daughter from you. There's no mercy in this world, friends. You want time with your kids? Get on to it now. They'll be gone. All right, and then pray like crazy for grandkids and you sort of get them back. Yes! Here's another one, serving God. Oh, well, I can't serve God right now, but because I've just got too much on, I'm going to wait. Once the kids are older, the mortgage is paid, my job's not so demanding, and you know things are better, and hey, if things calm down, I'm not so sure, then I will serve God. No, friends, do it now. Serve God today. What about saving money? Oh, well, I'll start saving, and no, no, friends, start saving today. There is never a good time To start saving. Don't wait for that salary increase. It may not come. Don't wait for that better job. You may never get one. Somehow find a way to start saving now. Principle number two. You reap according to what you sow. How many of you know, here's a question, if you sow tomato seeds, what are you going to reap? Tomatoes. If you sow peach seeds, what are you going to reap? Peaches. If you sow potato seeds, what are you going to reap? Oh, you're intelligent. Very intelligent church, this. You know that the seed that you sow determines a crop that you reap. So here's my big question today. I want you to really think. What do you want happening in your life this year, next year, in five years, 10 years, and 20 years? What do you want happening in your life? What blessings do you want to enjoy? Think about it right now. Write it down. If you've got a pen, write something down. I want to enjoy better health. I want to enjoy financial blessing. I want to enjoy people loving and caring for me. I want to enjoy people praying for me. Friends, make your decision. I want people speaking well of me. Once you've made your decision, then start sowing like crazy in that area. Start sowing love into others. Start praying for other people. Start speaking well of others so you speak, have, have people speaking well of you. Decide today. You want your family loving, caring together. You're not, hey, start spending time with them. You want to enjoy loving God and, and the blessing that comes from, start serving Him. Friends, make a decision. So I'm urging you through this message. It's a bit like, you know, you, whatever, you've got to sow according to what you want to reap. It's a bit like a man who buys an orchard. What does he do? He decides what fruit he wants. So if he wants nectarines, he plants nectarine seeds. He may want peaches or pears or apples or whatever it might be. He decides, he thinks about it, he strategizes, he pays a price, and intentionally, deliberately, he sows and sows and sows. And years to come, there's the nectarines, there's the peaches, there's the apples. Whatever he sowed, he's got. Friends, he doesn't just buy an orchard and say, okay, over to you, Mother Nature. And go out a few months later and say, now where are my apples? Where are the peaches? Where's the nectarines? And people say, you idiot. You didn't sow any seeds. Friends, control of our lives. We want to reap where we've never sown. 
We want people to visit us, care for us, look after us, but we've never done it to anyone else. We want people to really be friendly and warm and kind to us, but we don't take time to be warm and friendly and kind to others, friends. You can't reap except for the mercy of God where you have not sown. <clears throat> Principle number three. Are we doing all right? Yeah. Thank you. We reap more than we sow. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. Now be careful. It's not all good. See, if it weren't for the fact that no, if this wasn't true, that you reap more than you sow, no farmer would plant anything. Think about it. You've got all these seeds. If you just plant all the seeds, and that's what, then a year later, six months later, he goes, digs that up, and there's the seed still there. He's going to think, flag this, I'm losing. Seed's germinated, nothing's happened, I'm gone. I'm out of here, I'm not going to sow any more seed. He depends on the fact that seeds will produce a, fo- uh, a result. They'll produce 30, 60, maybe 100-fold fruit. He depends on it, otherwise he would never sow. You reap more than you sow. One seed of corn reaps so much more. Now, I said this is not all good because this works positively and negatively. If you sow good, you're going to reap far more than you actually sow. But if you sow bad, you're going to reap more than you sow. If you've got a strong heart, come with me to Hosea chapter 8, verse 7. Hosea 8, verse 7. You found it? They sow the wind. They reap the whirlwind. You notice that? You don't reap what you sow. It doesn't say sow the wind, reap the wind. No, sow the wind, reap the whirlwind. Whirlwind, which which means a violent, destructive tornado. Whether it's good seed or bad seed, you sow more, you reap more than you actually sow. Proverbs 22 verse 8 says, He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow. And this word means misfortune, as with circumstances, calamity. When we sow wickedness, we reap a big harvest of adverse conditions. That's why I'm encouraging you, urging you today and me, let's sow good seeds. Let's not sow bad seeds. Number four is you reap in proportion to what you sow. Now, this is different to the law before. Watch me and stay with me and see if you can follow this. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes (coughs) chapter 11, which is far nicer than Hosea. Hosea is no friend of mine. Ecclesiastes 1, 11, 1, 2. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight. In other words, give generously. So generously. If you want to reap a bountiful harvest in some area, sow in a bountiful way. So if you want a lot of people praying for you, then you pray for a whole lot of people. If you want people loving you, then you love on a whole lot of people. Love bountifully. If you just want you know, one person to love you once a year, well, then you love one person once a year, and then you might get two back. If you want lots, say, love 100 people, and you'll get 1,000 people loving you. You reap in proportion to what you sow. So if a farmer only cultivates one acre, guess what? He'll get a harvest that one acre can produce. But if he cultivates 100 acres, guess what? Wow, you're going to think, fantastic. What a massive harvest, 100 times more. Now, this principle does not affect the principle before. It's different. Yeah, I said the principle before is you reap according to what you sow. Or Sorry, you reap more than you sow. That's the principle before. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Both laws are to do with quantity. However, the previous law was God's part. This law is our part. God's part is whatever you sow, he will multiply it many fold. Our part is we need to sow as abundantly, generously, and massively as we can for maximum return. See, so you sow one seed, God will maybe, you may reap 10. But hey, if you sow 10 seeds, you're going to reap 100. See, God's going to multiply it anyway. That's his part. But our part is so generously, joyfully, Abundantly. I have a friend. It might surprise you, but I do. <laughs> His name is Mark. He lives in the United States. I met him via India. 
He's a farmer, successful farmer. A few years ago, he decided he's going to have a hazelnut farm. And uh, because it's a bit of a big demand, he thought this, is, this could work for him. So he went out and he planted some hazelnut trees. When we found out about it, the question was asked, well, how many trees did you plant? Well, this guy is smart. He understands these principles. He said, I planted 28,000 trees. And friends, believe me, he's reaping. He's making big dollars. But hey, he could have, re- he could have sown 28 trees. Just have a go, see what happens. But he's, he's worked this principle out. 28,000 trees. <clears throat> they asked Captain, I think it's Levi or Levy, I'm not sure how you say it, of Philadelphia. They asked him this question. How was he able to give so much to God's work and yet have so much left over for himself? And he answered as this. He says, well, I shovel out. God shovels in. But God has a much bigger shovel than I do. That's right. <laughs> Come on, church, it's time to shovel. Start to shovel it out. Just buy yourself a slightly bigger shovel. You know, you can shovel with a teaspoon. <laughs> why not go to a tablespoon? Hey, why not go to a serving spoon? Why not actually get a spade? <laughs> shovel. Start shoveling. Yeah. Why not get a bucket? Why not get a front-end loader, fill it up and shovel it out? Because no matter how much you shovel, God's going to multiply infinitely more. Now, it's all good so far, but here's the trick. Here's the trap. Here's where many miss out on sowing and reaping. It takes time before you reap. Back to Ecclesiastes 11.1. 1. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Galatians 6. Do not become weary in well-doing, for in due time you will reap. It's very easy to stop sowing when you don't reap quickly. You might say, well, what do you mean by quickly? Well, the Lord says, you know, days is a thousand years. For the Lord, a thousand years is a day. You may reap today. You may reap this year You may reap next year, it could be five years, it could be 20 years, it could be 50 years, it may be an eternity. But I'm promising you something, this Bible says you will reap. If you don't give up. See, and I think many of us, somewhere along the line, we give up. Have you ever heard people say this? I serve God. I sought first the kingdom of God, but look at my life. It's a mess. I'm not going to serve God. I'm not going to love God anymore. They stop sowing. And of course, life gets, goes from bad to worse. As I said, this principle is not going to cause you to avoid all the heartaches and challenges and difficulties in life. It's just not. That's, God is sovereign. God does what he wants. We can't dictate that. But he does give us some power to determine to an extent our future. You hear some people say, well, I, I tried this giving thing. You know, I tithed. I did it for five years. I did it for six months. Say, look, my, nothing's happened in my finances. I'm not doing it anymore. That's the big trap of this whole principle of sowing and reaping. Why so many don't reap as much as they want to because somewhere along the line, it may be after a year, maybe after five years, maybe after 50 years, they stopped sowing. Friends, we've got to sow to the last day. Because some of our reaping will actually be in eternity. It really will. A lot of your prayers, the results, you'll only even see in eternity. So you can't put this principle just into a, a, a now time frame, a this life time frame. Friends, this life is a moment. It's a shadow. It's a whisper. It's a vapor. And it's gone. I read the other day, the glory of man is like the grass that withers. You see people having all this glory and fame. Friends, it's a moment. And most of it's worthless anyway. Sowing and reaping, friends. Make a decision today. You'll sow good seed till the the day you transfer into eternity. At times, friends, the effort will seem overwhelming. But if you don't give up, you will reap. Is there any area that comes to mind now where you've just sort of kind of thought, well, I think I've done my bit, I've sown enough, I'm going to call it a day? 
I want to encourage you, don't call it a day. Keep sowing. There's a great reward. Honest way. In fact, heaven's just, I just have the sense of heaven waiting. Just waiting. And he's like, man, I just, I just want to unload blessing on the saint of God at Church Unlimited. Oh, I just want to release so much of the favor of God. Man, if they'll just keep sowing a bit longer. They'll just keep praying a bit longer. It's almost like God's heart's aching and saying, please, I beg you, sow and keep on sowing. So abundantly, so generously. See, friends, the harvest comes in a different season from the planting of the seed. We all know that, don't we? You don't plant seeds t- tomorrow, today, and go out the next day and think, oh, where's my harvest? No one does that. We know that we're going to have to wait months, maybe years. Different products take different lengths until before they bear their fruit. Some happen quickly, some take years. But this, tr- this is also true whether we sow good seeds or bad seeds. So I already keep coming back to this, but I want to encourage us to avoid sowing bad seeds. I want us to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Hey, let's stop sowing that bad seed. It's going to reap a terrible harvest. But you see, the harvest doesn't come immediately. It comes at God's appointed time, and he has an appointed time. So you've sown some good seeds, and the harvest not come. There's an appointed time. It may take some time, but it will come. But friends, also, with bad seeds that we've sown, the harvest doesn't come necessarily immediately, but it does come maybe some point or some time in the future. God in his long-suffering often waits before the results come through. My final point today is this, and I hope you can get this in your spirit, that reaping is certain. See, if we really believe that, if we all believe that, absolutely in every area of our life, most of us would go out and we're just so like crazy. But somehow underneath we kind of think, well, it doesn't really quite work that way. Friends, God's word's not going to lie to us. Let's go back to Galatians, shall we, just as we start to wrap this up for today. Galatians chapter 6. Do not be deceived, verse 7. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. The reaping is coming. And we can talk about harvest in two different time frames. First, there's the harvest in this life. At times, it may seem like those who sow bad seeds get away with it. They seem to prosper, have good health, long, live long, and live in abundance. But friends, let me tell you, in the end, they will reap as they have sown. If not in this life, most certainly in the next. Don't judge things by this life. Don't judge your life by this life. It's far more important what your life and eternity will be like. That's where most of our rewards will come. Many of those who have sown good seeds and actually have harvested wonderfully in this life. Some people won't appear that they have. You might say, boy, they've served God so faithfully. Man, they've, they've poured into the kingdom of God. They've sacrificed. But man, their life really isn't that blessed. Friends, sometimes it will look like that. I promise you something. When you see that person in heaven, you'll think, ah. <gasps> Yeah, too right. You are blessed beyond measure, beyond anything I thought or imagined would happen for you. Friends, it's going to happen. It's going to be proven to be true. So with the law of sowing and reaping, there's a huge emphasis on the eternal. Look at verse 8. Just most of, some of you may have missed this. He who sows to his flesh will reap of the flesh, reap corruption or destruction. He who sows to the Spirit, watch this, will reap what? Everlasting life. Now we're talking truths that affect our eternity. Not just this life. We're talking about now reaping and sowing, going into the next life. So how do we sow to the Spirit? We sow to the Spirit by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. We sow the seed of faith in Jesus Christ in our life, and we reap the most magnificent possible harvest on the planet that as we go to be and live in heaven forever with Jesus, no sorrow, suffering, or pain. It is the most wonderful seed anyone could ever sow, faith in Jesus Christ. But then there's those who only sow to the flesh and never sow the seed of faith in Jesus. My Bible says they will 
reap the tragic consequences, not only of trouble in this life, but, friends, something infinitely more terrible. That they will reap a lost eternity, separated from God in hell forever, where the fire is never quenched, where the torment never stops, and the suffering goes on and on forever and ever and ever and ever. The worst seed possibly to not sow is faith in Jesus Christ. As we conclude, we can't do anything about last year's harvest, can we? But we can about this year's and future years. We can't do anything about what we sowed last year and its consequences. But we can change what we sow into the future. If you didn't sow well last year or the years gone by, here's some fantastic news. You can change it all from today onwards. You can begin to make a decision today. You're going to sow this incredibly good seed, fantastic seed. Every one of us, friends, can sow seeds that will guarantee that we'll enjoy some great blessings in our lives. As I said, you cannot go through this life trouble-free. It doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. But you can significantly influence your future. You can determine to a a great extent what happens in your life in 5, 10, 15 years from now. And that is by sowing the right seeds, sowing good seeds. Because God says, as you sow, you will reap. If you sow good, you're going to reap an abundance of good things in your life. This year, next year, and the years to come. God has put it into our hands. He's given us the power to dictate and influence our future to a significant degree by sowing good seeds and avoiding sowing bad seeds. I must admit, this is an incredibly challenging truth. But the good thing is this, it puts power into your hands and into my hands. I can determine, as you can as well, to a certain measure, what our futures look like. All we have to do is sow the right seeds in abundance from today and our future is going to look so much brighter. We would love to pray personally and specifically for you. Why don't you send us your prayer requests via the website on the screen and we'll get our intercessors praying for your miracle. I'd love you to join me again next week. Thanks for watching Running With Fire with Tark Barna from Church Unlimited. For more great free content, visit runningwithfire.com. You can send us your prayer requests, stream online TV and radio episodes, and view blog articles. You can also connect with Takbana through Twitter for regular updates. Church Unlimited meets at two locations in Auckland, New Zealand. You're welcome to come along for a visit.